Good uh, morning. Are gathering than normal. We had 14 adults and 12 I am children. Uh, by, by our family standards, that's a small same group. Time, but, uh, but what I love about his big birthday, family celebrations, his birthday is how much breakfast, my father's on his way over. Uh, that experience of being with your family and you're just I'm taking my notes. I mean, uh, there's two and services, and one so of the, the big of and plus, plus I can always look at stories that everybody knows. You know, the one about when we notes. stole all those Rice Krispie treats or we convinced Hillary that she was adopted. And, and when I tell do notes, stories, I always and go sometimes back. Sometimes you don't even have to like, tell the I'll story. You just mention them. the story. And everybody cracks up and you're having a good time. But here's the thing. You ever noticed that when there's a guest around, your family stories just aren't quite as funny, you know? Like you t you're trying to explain why this inside joke is just so hilarious and the best you get is like the courtesy chuckle. <laughs> it's like, oh, great, guys. It's so, so good. I just don't want to be rude, you know? It, it, the same is true when we're talking about Christian sexual standards, okay? Uh, it's one of those you just had to be there kind of things. Uh, when we're talking about our standards about sexuality to the world around us, uh, the culture says it, this just doesn't... I'm making bacon, scrapple, and uh, eggs. My dad usually likes the sunny side up, so I'll make him sunny side ups for his birthday. I haven't gone anywhere, it's really. Oh, I get to give my dad his, a, a present. I think I didn't give it to him yet. It's in my bag. Okay. Some bacon is done, guys. Praise God. So I'll take a picture of my father and I for his birthday and hopefully I can figure out how to put one of them birthday banners around it. I don't know how to do that though. I might be able to. Biblical sexuality is countercultural sexuality. Not only that though, biblical sexuality is life-giving sexuality. Look at verse 5. God says, set my decrees and laws for the person who obeys them will live by them. I will live by them. God's rules about sex are meant to give life. That's why he tells us. That God puts boundaries on sex because he knows it's a nuclear power. Uh, it's contained right. It can power a city. Uh, used poorly, it can power a city. Now you can think about these rules about sex as kind of uh, warning labels that God puts on his good gifts so that we don't miss you. Have you ever seen a ridiculous warning label on something before? Brandon, are you ready? Uh, how, how about this one? Uh, these are real labels. Are you ready, Brandon? Uh, Brandon? Yeah, I'm going to eat it in my This product is not intended yeah. for use as a drill. Oh, drill says this. Do not oh, use my kid, leave her near that, zombie. A hair dryer says, <laughs> do not use while sleeping. <laughs> Do not use while sleeping. Somebody does one of these stupid things and sues the company, and then they've got to say, okay, we're going to warn people about that. This is kind of what God is doing with these laws. He's saying, look, I know. Like, I've actually seen people take my gift of sex and misuse it in this foolish way. I did a um, cause and effect um, comparison um, essay years ago when, when back when I did uh, the communi oral communications class on um, the difference between. Uh, so it seems like we'll, we'll uh, yeah. talk so much about difference between screwdrivers. The different screwdrivers. Yep. An automatic screwdriver and a handheld screwdriver. Yep. Praise God. Because these are laws that are not about protecting the people. These are laws Praise about God. protecting vulnerable women in a patriarchal household. Yeah, you've got to remember that back in those days, the entire extended family lived together on one piece of land, often in one yeah. building. Uh, the, you know, in-laws and uh, uh, grandchildren and, and whole groups of people. It was a large group of people. And the head patriarch in the family had a huge amount of power. And it was often oh, unchecked oh, by oh, anybody oh, else. Oh, 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 abuse of women who were within the house. And so these are yeah, laws about checking the abuse of power of what? men in you a pick it up. And of course, that I know. they're as relevant today as they ever did. Now, there's a number of different statements.
statistics about this, but the one I found from the Department of Justice said that one in five women and one in six men have been victims of sexual assault. And the vast majority of those situations were done by family members or within a home. And so that's the reason why I'm actually glad that these laws are in the Bible, because it tells survivors of sexual assault what God actually thinks about what happened to them. Mind that. 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 Mind that.
I'm done. I'm done. With sex. I'll take my vow of celibacy and move on because I've been degraded for too many years. Praise